folks, this is your host Seishu at TiffinCast and today we're speaking with entrepreneur, author, and Jets fan, Gary <laughs> Vaynerchuk. Gary, thanks for joining us today. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be with you, Seishu. Thank you so much. I'm excited to, to have you back here. I know it's been a, a, about a year or so when, since we last talked uh, when your book, Thank You Economy, came out. And yeah. um, you're one of the authors, I'll tell you right off the bat. I've read both your books cover to cover without stopping. Thank you so I'm much. I'm not just flattering you. I'm just telling you the truth. And, I, and I'm not the only one, my friend. Um, I've talked to people uh, all the way in New Zealand who have read your books and have said, man, this guy is phenomenal. Um, so let's dive right into how you got yourself, where you got yourself. Okay, we all yep. know we all know you got your start as a as a wine distributor. Um, you've got your you you got uh, a phenomenal following thanks to uh, a video show that you started. What really motivated you to start the the video show? Like what what told you like okay this is going to be the way I'm going to reach my audience? You know, so I'm a classic immigrant story, right? You know, uh, born in uh, the former Soviet Union, came to America um, and got involved in a family business. And I innovated in the wine business. And then the reason I decided to go to a show, oh, did I chop up again? You did a little bit, but that's okay. You're back. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Sorry about that. That's okay. You know, the reason I decided to, uh, uh, it's, it's chopping. Hold on. I got to figure out what's going on here to see if there's a hard wire because this chopping must be a bandwidth thing. Give me a second. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. <coughs> Nate, it's chopping a little bit. Hmm. I wonder if it's that office. I don't think it's location-based Wi-Fi. Is anybody street? Like, is anybody downloading movies or anything like that? Fox is, might be streaming streaming something for the episode that they're live seeing. Can you find out if they are or aren't? Your computer's frozen. So, like, on, you know, so, terms of, yeah. Sorry about this, my friend. No problem. No problem at all. Are they? <coughs> Are they? Can they turn it off or no? They're CMing, right? So they're streaming, right? Yeah. Was that down to 15 standard? But the thing is, is that honestly, that shouldn't, for what, I don't know what we're paying for. I don't know. I'm all, doing it. I know. I agree. All right. Let me just, let me just move location. I don't know. Let me, let me just, um, let me do it here and see what happens. So far, you haven't cut out, so. Yeah, I noticed, so I'm going to try to keep going. Okay, I'll start again. So basically, I'm a classic immigrant story. Uh, you know, grew up in a family liquor store business, fell in love with the wine world, then launched winelibrary.com in 1996, early, uh, innovated, but the wine show happened because I thought YouTube was the next big thing, right? I, in 2006, I saw this YouTube thing. I thought it was going to be huge. I jumped all in. And that's become my track record, right? Jumping on new things, new platforms early on and, and going from there. Okay. Okay. So you, you've got a show uh, and you've reached out to your audience on a consistent basis. Um, let's jump right into your new book, uh, Jab, 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 Right Hook, How to Tell Your Story in a Noisy Social World. And um, I approached you because I feel like as a photographer and as a as someone who's sort of in tune with what's going on in my industry. Uh, I'm one of many photographers and there are many, many more joining the ranks every day um, in this business. Um, how do I distinguish myself in this very noisy world? What do I do? I mean, there's a million ways to do it, but what you have to do before anything else is you have to tell your story, right? We have to know why why you? Why watch Gary's wine show? Why use Gary's you know, um, agency? There's a million agencies. Uh, there's a billion photographers. So you have to figure out what your story is. That's hard for a lot of people. Um, you know, a lot of times you don't have a differentiation story, right? You're just a good, solid photographer. You're a great photographer. You can be anything, but it's not a great story. The only story that you really have is your own story, right? It's why I talk about my own story. You know, not everybody was born in Belarus and get, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great businessmen. There's a lot of great businessmen personalities out there. One of my unique attributes is I wasn't born in America. Mm -hmm. The immigrant story is attractive. There's also my style. 
you know, my uniqueness and, and we all have that. And so I, I, I think the biggest way you break through is by be, being authentically you mm-hmm. and then figuring out which channels you over index on. I continue to find you interesting because I think you do a good job on camera. There's very few people that are good on camera. There's very few people that can do this interview that we're about to do. And I remember our thank you economy one. I remember hanging up and being like, it was pretty good. Like there's just like, you know, there's a, thousands of people that are gonna watch us that aren't as good, don't feel as comfortable asking that question, setting this up question, feel intimidated. So we all have to find out where we feel good storytelling. I'm very native to Twitter. I love listening, being involved. I'm super, I'm the, I'm the best at Twitter. Like I really <laughs> truly believe that. I think I'm as good as it gets. Um, and then on Facebook, I'm solid. And on Pinterest, I'm average. And on Tumblr, I'm below average. And so now I understand it all. VaynerMedia makes all, all brands great at that, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm not great at all of them. And so we have to figure out where we're great. Is it written word? Is it through pictures? Is it through videos? Is it through animated GIFs? Is it through infographics? And then we need to execute properly within it. And the reason I wrote this new book is to show individual case studies on how to do it well on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, Instagram. Okay. So in, in, in some respects, what you're saying is pick one rocket, essentially. Or three. Like, you know, you know, you make, you know, know, I'm pretty damn good in YouTube, Spreecast, Twitter. Um, so, you know. Okay. All right. Um, what if one of my uh, friends in, from Canada asks me, um, asked me to ask you, actually, uh, would iPhone photos at some point be considered okay in the marketing world as, as, a, as a commodity or as a, as a, as a way of, of sharing information? Would that be, would that be too far of a, of a stretch to say images from, a, from an iPhone or, or... It's happening now. It is. I know. I know it is. It is. The answer is yes. And I don't even have to predict. I mean, there's tons of brands that are sharing and storytelling with the quality of an iPhone. And I think that that's a photographer friend question because you guys are overthinking the quality value in a higher quality. But, but you know, it was kind of like my wine show, right? Like there was no production value and everybody was wondering why it did well. You know, um, you know, no mic, no lighting. I mean, I'm doing it now. Once again, no mic crap lighting, I look terrible, look at these bags. I'm like, I don't care though, because it's the information that matters. And right. so, um, you know, I think that, I think that to answer your buddy's question, it's happening now. And the only reason he doesn't realize it or is he, or he's curious is that he knows it's happening and he's fascinated by that. I mean, look, Instagram made everybody a photographer. And if I was a photographer, I'd be really pissed. But guess what? You know, Amazon put bookstores out of business and some guy used to own a thousand horses and sell them for transportation and the card put him out of business. And, you know, and some, you know, I mean, just people get put out of business by innovation. Like, you know, I'm sorry that technology happened. You know, wineries should be selling all their wine direct. And if they were good enough to do it, then wine library would be out of business. Right. And so, Uh you know, I mean, if everybody knew everything that I knew at every moment, then I'd be out of business. Like, you know, it's just, um, it's just a capitalistic world. So there is a sense that you have to almost always keep ahead of your competition or I'm your... Trying to, I'm trying to put myself out of business every day. I know you'd said that uh, on Facebook or Twitter just recently. I was like, what, exactly is, right. what does he mean by that? What is that? And it's something I'm saying for the first time in a little while. That's why I, I tweeted the other day. That's why I'm bringing it up in this interview. I'm trying to put myself out of business. I'm trying to think about how do I make my money and what am I vulnerable to? And if I don't do it, somebody else will do it. Interesting. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, that's it. I mean, and I don't want to get out innovated because if you get out innovated, you're going to be vulnerable. Sounds, sounds like something you would absolutely say, of course. Oh, <laughs> um, another friend of mine now, this time from New Zealand, the guy who loves your, your books, uh, he's asked me to ask you this. And he says, um, you know, there's been so much hype in the last 10 years about um, especially online where business, you know, is, is easy and income is easy to, you know, to generate. And it, it's a, there's a quick fix to every, everything out there. Um, you obviously don't believe that because your book, Crush It, is all about just getting there and working your tail off. I mean, I've read that a couple of times and you believe hard work really is the only way. Um, no, 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 no. I believe hard work is one of the, it feels one of the most manageable ways. Not the only, there's a million ways to do it. You know, efficiency, 
four hour work week, Jason Freed. There's a lot of things that work. Hard work funnily feels to me as something that's more controllable than having the brain power to create that infrastructure. Hmm. It feels to me, and I could be wrong, but it feels to me as one of the bigger variables that one can control if they want to, if they choose success professionally over the leisure hours. Like, it's, it's just, you know, listen, I don't have a six pack, right? I could, I know what it takes to get there, and I know that if I eat better and do a lot of crunches and sit-ups, I could have it. The path to that victory is right in front of my face. I'm choosing not to. And so I don't deserve a six-pack. And so this notion that there's all these growth hacking systems in place, every single person in the world, Jason Fried, Tim Ferriss, all these amazingly brilliant entrepreneurs that talk about these efficiencies, they worked really hard to get to a scale where they could apply those efficiencies. I have them. I have huge businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like I just think working hard is a good idea because I think a lot of people are lazy as crap or, or, or think and are looking for this excuse of a silver bullet. It's, listen, it's really romantic to think you can lay on a beach in Tahiti while money just comes in. You know, but, you know, the real, like, yeah, like real work has to be done to get there. How do you stay connected to your passion? You know, my passion is, to, is people. And so by being a public figure, that allows me to like scale that. Mm -hmm. um, by building big businesses and having lots of employees, that does it. Writing books and being out there and book signings and public speaking, that does it. You know, my passion is building businesses, engaging with people, storytelling, climbing the mountain, you know? And so, you know, it, everything I do is, is kind of attached to driving that passion. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your book. I want to know what is it that, that we're going to learn about uh, really standing out in a noisy world. I mean, clearly, we've already talked about how the photography business or the photography industry is a very noisy place. Lots of people out there, lots of people essentially um, claiming that they're photographers and are out there even teaching workshops and, and doing things that, at, at some, some level seems um, not so authentic. How do you stay authentic and remain, I guess, the go-to photographer in this business? You know, a lot of people say the Kardashians aren't quality television, right? Or that, you know, or that hip hop music isn't quality. You know, I think it's very dangerous for somebody who takes a lot of pride in the way they were taught a craft to start throwing judgment on other people because they're cutting corners or they're actually saying things that are wrong. But, you know, I, I think that the, the market decides what's quality. And so, you know, to me, it's by putting out content in today's world on the networks where the consumer is. I think that people are spending more time on Facebook and, and Instagram and Pinterest and Tumblr. And you've got to figure out how to tell your story in that world. And this book is a blueprint. I mean, this is a real utility. This is much more Crush It, and it's Crush It to an extreme, really. The people that loved Crush It, I think, are really gonna eat this book up because there's 86 case studies. It's the most tactical book I've ever written. It's the most under the hood of the actual tactics that I use to be successful that I've ever written. And so, you know, I think people- But, but let, me, let me ask you this. Would you say it, what, what you've written in the book uh, is scalable uh, in the sense, would somebody who's just a one-person operation like me or, uh, you know, my competition down the road, would they be able to pick up the book and go, yeah, I can definitely make sense of how to do this for myself in my community here, you know? Uh, is, is, that, is that the kind of book it is? It is. Okay. Much like shit, but at the same token, like, you know, you have to actually do it. You know, like, here's the funny part. People always talk to me and say, well, it's not scalable. I'm like, okay, cool. What's the alternative? Hmm. So yeah, you're going to read and be like, wait a minute, am I good at Photoshop to make these photos? You might not be. I'm not good at Photoshop, right? Right. So you may say that, but what's your, like, you better hustle your ass off and go find somebody that's good at Photoshop and trade them photography lessons for their Photoshop skills. Like, I, I'm so confused by people being philosophical when there's no other choice. 
Like, great, okay, it's not, it, you know, it's not scalable, cool. So go out of business, dickhead. I mean, like, you know, like, I don't get it. Like, like I'm so confused by this notion. People have gotten very philosophical without realizing that the alternative is quite not, it's not very attractive. Here's the gist. People are spending more and more time in these channels. If you don't figure out how to make the pictures and the videos and the written copy that gets their attention, you will become more and more irrelevant. Just like the people that underestimated websites, right? Just like the people that underestimated search. Just like the people that underestimated right. you know, YouTube. And so you're more than welcome. Great, do your thing, but come see me in five years. Gotcha. Last question for you. Um, jab, 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 right hook. What does it mean to you and how have you personally used that in your own business, in, your, in the wine business or the Vaynerchuk media business? Give, you... give, 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 and then ask. What I'm trying to teach people is when you post on Facebook and Twitter, you have to put out content that authentically really wants to give and you have to authentically ask. Listen, a lot of people are scared to ask. A lot of people are scared to say, buy my book or here's my 60 book offer. People are scared. They're crippled by the business ask. I realized that when I wrote Thank You Economy because the people that got it the best didn't go out and make as much money or drive business results as they did with Crush It because Crush It was more for a salesperson. Thank You Economy was more for, for philosophical and I watched people be crippled by the sale. And so I really wrote this book for the people that are scared to ask for business mm -hmm. and I also wrote this book for the people that are you know, are ready to graduate to a graduate level social media knowledge, getting into the amount of letters that should be in copy, colors they should use, what time they should post. Very tactical, granular. So for me, it means give, 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 and then ask. And you know, how have I used it? It's been my whole life's philosophy, right? Like I'm more comfortable in giving first and having the leverage for a rainy day in the future, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So a little segue from that. Uh, or rather, a follow-up follow -up question for that is, okay, so again, for photographer friends who are watching this show, uh, what is it What is it that they can do to, to give, 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 and then what is it that are they going to ask, uh, and who are they asking? Great question. Giving. I would be searching Twitter all day long looking for photography terms, right? model numbers of foot cameras. Somebody's tweeting right now that they don't know how to use this Nokia 464. Like, I don't get it. And you do, and you could search and reply. That's giving, okay. right? Okay, yeah. Um, you could be giving by putting out tutorials or how-tos or filters or things that you learned. You can make a little infographic of like three things I learned about shooting on rainy days. And you put it out there and it gets shared on Facebook and brings you awareness because that's you giving, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you and then you want to start building a database, people following you on Facebook and Twitter. That in theory, you know, you can ask for. So if you're a photographer for weddings, you should be following people talking about bridal stuff, and you should be giving free advice. Maybe you even offer. I mean, I live. I believe in spec work. Go shoot somebody's wedding for free. That was talking about how they couldn't afford a photographer on Twitter. You do a nice gesture. Maybe two other people there saw you, and they all of a sudden give you business because you did that. I mean, I promise you, any bride that couldn't afford a photographer, that tweeted about her emotions on Twitter, that you jumped into and gave fr free photography for their wedding, she would tell every person at that wedding and everybody for the rest of her life, and I promise you that you would get five pieces of business for that one gesture. Terrific. I'm, I'm gonna give that, uh, that approach a shot, except I don't, I don't do weddings anymore. I, I, only, okay. I do fo uh, portraits and Definitely want to make my mark local here, so in Avon, Connecticut, and I'm, I'm, so already, listen, I'm already starting to do that. Search locally, mm -hmm. look for somebody that's talking about just having a child, you know, like just had a baby, jump in and be like, you know what, I want to, congratulations, I want to do this for you for free, for you and your family, and mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the cost is involved, sure. but my intuition is that you get five more pieces of business, and the overall net net you made for four pay, five paying jobs out of six jobs, Here's what I would tell you to do. Whatever you charge for that job, I guarantee you that you can, let me give you, let me paint you how I am a businessman. I find somebody on Twitter that says that. I do it for free. I normally charge $500 to do that work. I'm making this up. I don't know anything about your world. Sure. Okay? Mm -hmm. You do that one for free. She or he starts telling friends about it and you raise your price to 600 bucks. And then you get five people and then you've actually made your exact nut. I mean, there's so many ways to slice a cat. Indeed, indeed. 
Gary, thank you so much for joining us here on Tiffin Cast. You've been fantastic. And I can't uh, wait for your book. I know it's coming out on November 26th. Um, quick little note here. I want to thank my sponsors, Shootproof and Queensbury Albums. Uh, more information will be posted under the post uh, this uh, video is going to appear under. So I look forward to working with you again. Hopefully we can connect face-to-face -face next time in New York City. I hope and, so. and go Jets. Thank you, brother. Take care of yourself. Take care. Bye. <laughs>